Ahoy and welcome. My name is Clemens Helm and this is CodeGyps Testing Tuesday number 21. Today is the last Testing Tuesday of this season and we're going to finish our focus on JavaScript by testing synchronous and asynchronous callback functions with QUnit. QUnit is a JavaScript unit testing framework. It is used to test projects like jQuery, jQuery UI and jQuery Mobile. It has got strong roots in front-end JavaScript testing and includes some neat features to test DOM operations. That's why we're also going to use it for front-end testing in this screencast. QUnit is perfectly capable of testing your Node.js project as well though. We're building the front-end of an e-commerce application today. So far, we've only got the most important UI element, the checkout button. We've got a JavaScript file that contains a module with two functions that deal with the checkout button. Let's write some tests for these functions with QUnit to make sure they work. The first function triggers a callback when the checkout button is clicked. In QUnit, we can write a test for it like this. To create a test, we call the test function and pass it a description of the text and an anonymous function containing the test code. We insert a checkout button into our test environment. Then we set an on checkout callback that makes sure it was called. Afterwards, we validate that our checkout button exists by asserting that the jQuery selector matches exactly one element. The texts we add at the end to the OK and the equal functions describe what the assertions do and will also show up in our test results. To run our test, we open the file test.html in the browser. We can see that our test works. Great! When we open the test, it shows us the descriptions of the assertions that ran. But why is there only one? Apparently our callback assertion wasn't performed. But why did the test succeed then? QUnit doesn't know that there should be two assertions in this test. It's happy that there was one assertion that passed, therefore it let the test succeed. Fortunately, we can tell QUnit to expect two assertions. We just add expect two at the top and when we run the tests now, the test fails, telling us that it expected two assertions, but one were run. Our second assertion wasn't run because callbacks are only called on active checkout buttons. So let's add a class active to our fixture. By the way, what's this QUnit fixture element? If we look into our test HTML file, there's one element with ID QUnit, which will contain the test results, and one element QUnit fixture, which is meant for test data. The QUnit fixtures element is special in that QUnit will clear it after each test. This way, we'll always have a clean fixtures element. If we put our fixtures somewhere else, we would have to clean them after each test manually to provide the same conditions for all our tests. But back to our example. We added the class active to our fixture. Now let's run the test again. This time it worked and it executed both assertions. There is one more function to test. The delayed checkout activation function activates the checkout button after one second to prevent users from clicking it accidentally before. It adds a class active to the button and triggers an activation event afterwards. Let's test this function. So we've got a test again that inserts a checkout button and calls the delayed checkout activation. Then it checks if the active class has been set as soon as the activation event was triggered. This test fails, stating expected at least one assertion but none were run. The reason is that the test didn't wait for the event to be called but exited immediately after adding the event callback. QUnit offers a solution for such asynchronous callbacks as well. Instead of a test, we create an async test. This will pause at the end of the test and wait for a call to the start function. So let's call start after our asynchronous assertion. Now our test passes. We can see that it takes one second to wait for the event to be triggered, but eventually it works. Great! This was our first Testing Tuesday season. I hope you liked it. Please let me know what you liked most, what you didn't like, and especially what you would like us to cover in the next season. In the meantime, check out the other blog posts on the CodeShip blog. 
We'll keep publishing a lot of interesting articles, so don't miss out on them. Thank you for watching 21 episodes, and one last time, always stay shipping.